the Keith Titanium GI Canteen and Mug Set. Is this something you should be considering for yourself? Let's talk about it. All right, before we get started, I just want to thank Keith of USA for sending me their titanium GI canteen and mug set so that I could share it with you. So what we're going to do in this video is try to accomplish a couple of things. First and foremost is answer the question, is this worth it? Should you purchase one of these titanium canteen sets for yourself? Because to be honest, they're expensive. There's nothing cheap about these things. But the question probably should be better asked, is it worth the money to you? And that's the one we'll, we'll focus in on. So what I thought I would do is I would show you in detail the Keith Titanium Canteen set that I have. I will also show you some tips and tricks that I've come with up with for using this. I'll demonstrate it both cooking my lunch and making some coffee. I also brought along my own GI Canteen set that I've had for a number of years and I'll show you that as an alternative to the titanium set. And of course I'm going to reference yet another one that you can take a look at if you're thinking about maybe one of these three's titanium sets. Okay, there is a few other things I want to mention. This is actually going to be the first in a series of three videos looking at the Keith Titanium cook sets. First off, I'll be looking at the GI set as I have here, but Keith also sent me another set. It is the cylindrical 40 ounce water bottle and 650 millimeter titanium mug. So that come, came as a set as well. So what I thought I would do is in the first video, talk about the GI set. In the second video, talk about the traditional round or cylindrical water bottle. And in the third video, bring the two of them together and compare them side by side to see if there's advantages or pros and cons for each of them to help you decide if any of these are, are what you're looking for. Okay, one other thing. You've probably already noticed this. It's black fly season and they're all over me. Now, I have put on some bug repellent so they're not biting, but that hasn't stopped them from going in my, not, my eyes, up my nose, in my ears. So if I'm doing this a lot, you'll understand why. Okay, let's get started by going over some of the physical specifications and I'll provide you some close-ups for this. And I think if I didn't mention, I'll show you some tips and tricks for using it when we get to that point. All right, let's get started by taking a look at the carry case that the Keith Titanium GI Canteen Set came in from Keith. So very simple, I'll take everything out so I can give you a little bit of a closer up on the case itself and pass a few comments, then of course we'll put that aside. So everything does fit down inside. There's the mug inside, there's the lid. It has its own little pocket on the front and of course the canteen nests inside of the mug. So I'll take the lid out, take the mug out, Put those aside for one minute while we look at the case. So, simple. It's, there's high quality in this in terms of the construction and the materials, but it is just so simple. There's really nothing much to it. It's well put together, as I mentioned. It does have a drawstring to tighten up on it, but to be honest, when this yoke strap goes over the top, there's not much of a chance of the bottle coming out. Uh, this may be the one complaint that I've heard about this case is that it is so simple. There are no pouches or side pockets for you to add anything to it if you wanted to make more out of it, like a full cook set. Now, I, I thought about that for a while, and while it would be nice to have a more uh, robust, more complex set, when I thought about it, this really fits with the philosophy of the canteen set. So this is just, like I said, simple and lightweight, yet still very functional. There's no frills for sure, but you're not going to be able to load up any additional weight on it. And I think that's where the philosophy meets the design. So I just point out that there is Molly straps on the back of it. It does have a shoulder strap with removable lobster type claws. They are attached by a small a nylon web lanyard, which seems to be very well secured. That was probably the one thing I looked at that and wondered if it would be uh, heavy duty enough. Now, here's the reason I say that. The way I often carry canteens during the summer is I carry them over my shoulder, exterior to my backpack, so that I have instant access to my water for drinking along the way. If I got one of the huge pouches with all the extra additional pockets on it, I would just be weighting myself down unnecessarily because all those items could be in my backpack in a separate bag. So that's the way I intend on carrying this is with this little bag 
and I have no fears that it will stand up to the use that I'm going to put it to. It's just not fancy. And I know that people have said it's not up to the quality of the rest of the set. I think I disagree in that it meets the design criteria, as I said a minute ago. All right, let's put that aside and get on to the canteen set itself. So I think probably the easiest thing to do is to start by looking at the canteen, then I'll show you the mug. So it is a traditional GI canteen set that is put together in two pieces, pressed into shape. The opening on the top is not super wide, but it is wider than, say, a lot of the original GI canteens are. That has pros and cons. I know people would like to see it lighter, uh, wider so they can get, get inside and make it easier to clean out. But uh, again, meets the philosophy. It's easy to use a water filter to put water inside of this. It's easy to get water inside of this in a stream or lakeside if that's what you're using it for. And uh, yeah, I think it's probably just fine. The uh, cap itself is titanium as well. It has a good quality stand-up D-ring on top and it does stand up nicely. It does have a silicone seal around here so it is not completely free of anything other than titanium. It does have that as well and uh, I'm okay with that. I know that Keith has been trying to come up with a lid that doesn't require any type of a seal but until that comes along this works just fine and we'll talk more about using these things together in a fire in a few moments. So the weight of this unit comes in at 5.6 ounces or 158 grams and I think without question that is its key selling feature. This thing is it's incredibly light. You just hold it and you say, there's, there's nothing to it. But when you're, once you get familiar with uh, titanium, you start to appreciate just how light and strong it is for items like this. Now, this bottle holds, yeah, you know, I think I wrote it down here somewhere, 37.2 ounces or 1,100 milliliters. In fact, it's marked with 1,100 milliliters right there, but that comes out to 37.2. So not quite a 40 ounce canteen, but still plenty or large enough for all the use that I, at least uh, that I would put it to. So, okay, so that is the canteen. We'll bring that back in a few moments time. Let's talk about the mug set. And the mug set, just a traditional GI canteen mug set with butterfly handles on the side. There are two types of handles on canteens. One are butterfly that fit like this, and the other one is the fold-over handle. There's pros and cons to both of them. This is what Keith has used, and it works just fine. And here is the lid, and one of the key features I'll say about the lid, other than the fact that it has a huge accessible, not exactly a D-ring, but a rectangular ring on top that does sit on top just nicely, is that it fits. It fits perfectly. It doesn't lock on so tight that it won't fall off. Actually, there, you can see it holds on, but not perfect, you know, not sealed on tight, if you will. You don't have to force it on, you don't have to force it on, but it is machined to fit perfectly on top. So the weight of the canteen cup itself comes in at, uh, with the lid, 4.9 ounces or 140 grams, and the canteen will hold 23.6 ounces of fluids or 700 millimeters, so just four, short of three cups, which again is plenty big for most of the uses you want it for. It was designed to, mat, to meet the uh, needs of a GI in, in the field, and I think it meets the needs of most bushcrafters and hikers that way as well. All right, so what else can I say about the two of these things? Quality. They, they just both speak quality. In a moment, I will show you my Rothko stainless steel GI canteen and my Nalgene Oasis water bottle made of Triton, which is a BPA-free plastic. And they are also, in combination, fairly lightweight, but you'll know right away that they just don't have the same standard of quality in their design or construction. And as I say, I'll show you those in a minute, but I wanted to show you a couple of things about the canteen set that you may already know, and if not, this may just help you decide whether or not you want to purchase this. Okay, so this, I suppose, can apply to just about any canteen set, regardless if it's titanium or GI or whatever, but uh, I've seen this talked about, and I know that people do do this, 
I don't think it's for me, as you'll appreciate why. So one of the questions you have is, how am I going to put that in the fire? Could I just shove it in around, some, put the fire all around it? Yeah, you absolutely could do that. Could I hang it over top of a fire? And the answer is yes, but there's a couple of caveats or a couple of ways of doing that. The one that I've seen recommended that I don't think I would want to do is that they say, if you put the lid in, give it a quarter turn, it'll hold on. Actually, even for me, it doesn't. So I have to give it at least almost a full turn. It'll hold on enough, but still be loose enough that you can hang the canteen like this over the fire. Uh, the idea being that if it's loose enough that if you tipped it, you could pour water out of it, then it's plenty loose for steam to escape. And I expect that's likely true. My issue is not so much that it uh, doesn't work the way it's described, it's that how easy would it be to go that far and now it's locked on and sealed. And then I've created a titanium pressure bomb or one, one turn the other way and the thing pops out and I drop my canteen in the fire and lose its contents. So that's not what I would like to do. Now, I may put this on top of a wood stove and just drop it in and leave it on there so it doesn't uh, lose too much heat or too much of anything get inside of it. But I don't think I would hang it the way it is recommended. Now, can you hang one of these canteens? Absolutely. I'll show you a couple of different ways you can hang a canteen like this over a fire. So here's one that I do every so often, and that is I have, and carry with me, I have one of these larger climbing carabiners. Not the huge locking ones, but just a uh, spring gate on the side of it like this. And this is kind of cool. You can do this with any canteen, by the way. Now, I can hang the canteen over the fire, albeit not straight up and down, but I can use the carabiner to hang the canteen over fire and it will do a perfect job of it. Not only that, with a pair of gloves, because it can get up rather hot, is you can actually use this to pour with as a handle on the outside of the canteen. And maybe I'll demonstrate that when it comes time to making coffee. By the way, if you're looking for some way of holding on to a hot canteen, well, of course, you're likely gonna have leather gloves with you so you can do that, but even that can get hot because this does draw heat quickly and, well, it'll dissipate heat, but that means the canteen itself is going to get very hot. So something I often take with me is one of these Coglin's uh, puck grabbers. And again, I've got a perfect thing. They're made of aluminum, they're very light, they're very cheap. I put them in most of my cook kits, depending on what it is. I, I've even used them to move wood stoves around as I needed to. But that is also something that you can pack away and use for pouring water, uh, boiling water or whatever out of your canteen into your mug or whatever else you're gonna pour it in. All right, let me show you what else I have here. So I've played around with these things for a while and come up with three different styles. Probably, uh, probably more right, accurately is two different styles. Maybe you've seen these. It's how do you use a toggle for suspending a canteen? So this is simply a small stick. It does have a little groove that I cut in it and it is slightly rounded on the ends, but that's, that's only a couple minutes strung on a piece of bank line. And you'll notice that one, at one side of the stick is a little bit longer than the other and that causes it to drop down. And there's a reason for that so that when you reach into the can, now you've suspended your can like this and this will hold, and I've done this, this will hold perfectly while you suspend it over a fire. And then when you're finished, you just have to work it out. Of course, you're not quite as uh, concerned about making sure it comes out as easy, but it does. It just goes in, you're ready to go, bring it a little bit to the side and it's ready to come out. The other style of toggle is like this. This one sometimes is referred to as the trapeze style. So it's again a toggle with some bank line, grooves on either end, just wide enough to reach uh, through the mouth of the bottle, but still suspend with the shoulders. And you would use that very much the same way. And it holds the bottle very well over a fire. And then when you're finished, you can pop it out. So that is a couple of ways of suspending a bottle over the fire that doesn't require you to use the lid, as risky as I think that is. Okay, so I've shown you some tricks and tips on using this. I've given you some close-ups. I've given you the specifications. Uh, maybe one more thing as I look at the bottle. As you can see, they do get dirty if you're gonna use them over fire. You can't get away from that. 
And uh, what I do is I don't try and get every last speck of soot or tar or everything off. But what I'll do and what I just did, uh, actually I just had a cup of tea using this and boiling water, is I just took it down to the edge of the lake and ground it into the sand. And that took enough of all the tacky, sticky stuff off so that it's not on my fingers, which means it's not going to be inside of my mug when I pack it away and I don't have to worry about make, getting a sticky mess inside of my mug. And I can do the same thing to the mug itself before I put it away in its pouch. All right, what I'll do at this point is I will get out my old set and show you that for comparison. And then we'll talk a little bit more about whether or not this is worth it to you. All right, this is the set that I've had for a number of years. The pouch itself that in the car or a carrying bag that is something I made for it a great number of years ago, uh, only because I couldn't find anything readily available and I didn't want to spend a lot of money because I didn't have a lot of money to spend at that time. But, uh, you know, it works. It's functional. Again, the same philosophy. I wear this or wore this around my neck for a long time so that I'd have uh, access to my water, especially during the summertime. So I'll just take the bottle out and then I'll take the mug out and a couple of small accessories that I have in here. Being a homemade case, it can be sometimes a little bit of a struggle to get it out, but not too bad. All right, I'll throw the case aside. It's nothing special. All right, in the bottom of the case, that's where I keep the lid. This is the Rothko lid that goes with the canteen mug. And I also keep a scrubby. And the scrubby I just cut to, to the same size. So I would have something to put between the lid and the bottom of the canteen mug, or the GI mug, just so that I would it'd be a little less noisy. I think that's probably the reason for it. So I bought this at a local surplus store a number of years ago. It was brand new. It is Rothko, which is a not a, an authentic military brand, but it, most people know them as they pre, uh, sell military-like items. And the reason I bought it, it was cheap. And that, you know, really, that was what it was all about. It was cheap. It did come with the lid, and uh, the lid doesn't quite, never has fit on just the way you want it to. I mean, it's functional. You know, you, it's if you put it over a fire, it's going to keep dirt out and it's going to allow everything to get hot faster and you can get it on. I've, I've played with this bending at a little bit to get a little bit of a better fit, but it, it just didn't fit the way the Keith Titanium one does. Now, this is made of stainless steel. And let me give you the weight for this. So the mug comes in 9.8 ounces or 277 grams, and that's almost twice the weight of the titanium version. So I think that's probably the, the biggest disadvantage to these is the weight. But then again, generations of GIs carried these and didn't complain about the weight, and I'm sure they were glad to have them. A uh, couple things I've done to mine is I took a skewer, just a heavy skewer, and bent it into shape after drilling a couple of small holes on either side so that I could create a bale for this that would mount and be able to use the mug over a fire. Uh, yeah, just a small thing. You know, it's it's not easy to get out once I get it in, mind you, but uh, yeah, it was functional enough that it worked and, uh, and did the job of what I wanted it to. Now, here's the thing. When I bought this, uh, the Rothko mug, there were no Rothko canteens available to me at the time. But what I did find is a Nalgene brand uh, GI style bottle. They call this the Oasis, made of a material they call Triton, which is a BPA free. This is extremely lightweight, extremely durable. No, you cannot boil water in this, at least not easily. I could in the emergency, but then again, I'd have this anyway. So I've got to get this little thing off so I can show you how well they nest together. It's going to take a second to, for there we go, force this off. There we go. Okay. So the Nalgene does fit inside of the canteen perfectly. Actually, there's no movement or wiggle. It just sits in there perfectly, which is exactly what you would want from it. So if you do happen to have one of the Rothko mugs or, or GI cups, and you don't have one of their canteens, but you can find one of these inexpensive uh, Nalgene bottles, then you can create a set that is very functional. Now, I'll give you the weight of the uh, 
now Jean bottle as well as what the GI stainless steel bottle would be. So if you were to buy this bottle, it would come in at 4.6 ounces or 131 grams. So, you know, that's actually lighter than the titanium uh, canteen is. Of course, it doesn't have all the advantages such as sturdiness and be it the ability to boil water in it. It does take smells. They, all of them will take smells with the exception of titan, titanium. A lot of the materials, aluminum, titan, uh, stainless steel and plastic can take a smell on, especially it depends on what you put in it and how long it's in there, of course. So that is a lightweight option, very inexpensive option, but without the versatility of a titanium one. Now, the Rothko GI canteen comes in at 10.1 ounces or 286 grams. Again, literally twice the weight of the Keith Titanium one. Okay, there is one other set that I don't have with me that I'll mention. I've looked at it. It was what I was looking to, towards purchasing prior to Keith sending me these, and that is the Pathfinder GI set. Again, I can't do a side-by-side -side because I don't have it, but I can give you some uh, specifications for it. So the canteen from the Pathfinder, from the Self-Reliance Outfitter, comes in at 11.6 ounces, which is 329 grams. The mug and lid come in at 10.7 ounces, which is 303 grams. So you can see that's just a little bit heavier than even the Rothko one. But of course, it ha doesn't have butterfly handles. It has the fold-over style handle on top. So here's a couple of things that I have not mentioned so far, and that is cost. All right, so what we've done so far is we've taken a closer look at the Keith Titanium GI Canteen and Mug Set. Oh, by the way, if you weren't aware of this, and likely you already were, the heavy cover uh, Titanium Canteen and Mug Set is made by Keith in China. So they're virtually identical and interchangeable. It's just brought into the US, branded as heavy cover, and then sold again. Prices, I think, is probably very cl close to it. So it's really up to you which one you want to purchase. Okay, so the price of the Keith Titanium GI Canteen and Mug is $160 US, which is $208 Canadian. There's nothing cheap about that. How about the Rothko? Well, if you were to purchase the Rothko stainless steel ones, and this, these prices I got off of Amazon, you could get the canteen and mug set for uh, $46 US or $60 Canadian. So much cheaper, at least maybe even a quarter, between a quarter and a third of the price of the titanium version. Now, you can probably even knock a little bit more off of that if you can find the Oasis uh, Canteen. I keep saying if you can find it because, to be quite honest, every time I look for them now, they're saying unavailable. But where they show them available, they run about 10 or $12 Canadian. So that's why I say they're less expensive if you can find them. And the only other one that I'll give you a price for is the Pathfinder GI set which is selling at $58 US and $75.40 Canadian. So still much cheaper, less than half the price of the Keith Titanium one. Uh, I think now what I'll do is I'll do some demonstrations of cooking with the Keith Titanium set where I make my lunch in the mug and then I use it and the canteen itself to make some coffee afterwards. And then when we come back, we'll have a, another discussion on whether or not this is worth it to you. So today is one of those days during the summer here in Nova Scotia where we are under a fire ban. So I could not have an open fire today. So what I am using to cook with, let me see if I can tip it down a little bit more so that you can see it, is the Bushcraft Essentials Ultralight Stove, which I carry with my Trangia stove. And that's the combination I am using to cook my lunch with and you know, it works. A uh, couple things here. The lunch that I'm having is just a simple homemade a dehydrated meal of things that I dehydrated myself and then packaged up in a vacuum seal. I just added a little bit of sausage that I had chopped up to, into it. It's just about ready to serve. Very easy thing to put together, but that of course is not the focus of the meal. But one thing I do want to say, and based on my experience, cooking with stainless steel and titanium for that matter is make sure that once you're 
water is up to temperature that you knock it back down with a simmer ring. You may be able to see I have the simmer ring inside here because otherwise you will or run the risk at least of scorching your meal and having it stick to the canteen. And if you're planning on having a cup of coffee using the canteen like I am, you'll have way more work than you bargained for to get it clean prior to having uh, coffee. So see I do have a boil going even with the simmer ring I could knock it back a little further but I think I am ready to take this off the heat in any case I can let it sit stuck to the bottom nope good I can let it sit with the lid on and just let it finish rehydrating but I think it's pretty close to ready now okay so that was just a simple demonstration of cooking inside of a canteen cup Next step after I have my lunch is to make my coffee. All right, time for some coffee. Rampage coffee, of course. My coffee of choice. Seems to be, well, see, it pretty much is the only coffee I take with me when I go out in the woods. So I thought I would stay with the theme of ultralight and with the titanium mug and, and canteen set. I'm using my GSI ultralight pour over coffee dripper. Great little device, works well. Uh, you know, it's not heavy duty by any means and you do have to wash out your filter after you use it, but uh, it, you know, it's scant ounce or two. One, two, three scoops of coffee, three tablespoons, put that aside. As I was wa waiting for my water to come to a boil, something I uh, hadn't thought of until just now is Instead of worrying about putting the, the canteen lid on top of the canteen to keep the heat in, I just used the, and it is a little hot, I just used the snuff cap from my uh, Trangia, turned it upside down, laid it on top, and it worked just fine. So I am going to use the Coglins grippers to pour this. And I'll just slowly work my... Hot water into the grounds of coffee. Give it a second. One thing I've found about the GSI one is that uh, water does tend to run through it a little faster than it would with a paper filter. And it's not to say you couldn't use this with a paper filter, but it kind of defeats the purpose, I think. <sighs> Love my Rampage coffee. Okay, a few more thoughts on the Keith Titanium GI Canteen and Mug Set. So, why titanium in the first place? Well, a couple thoughts on titanium. Number one is lightweight. I think that's the first thing everybody thinks about when they think of titanium is lightweight. However, having said that, aluminum is lightweight. Why don't we gravitate towards aluminum? Durability, and that's the other thing about titanium. It is as light, as aluminum, but as tough and as durable as stainless steel. And you might argue even more durable because titanium is non-reactive. It won't react with any of the foods or coffee or liquids or anything you put in it. Stainless steel can do that and stainless steel and aluminum and plastic for that matter can take on a taste depending on what you put on them. And it's once you get a taste in the metal in the, or the plastic, it can be very hard to get out. I have not experienced that at all with titanium. So that's a plus. What have we got? We've got lightweight, heavy duty, non-reactive to any outside materials. But is that enough to make it worth paying all that extra money for? And I know that's the question we started this video off with is, should you buy it? Is it worth the money? Well, this is a challenge to answer. And to be honest, I'm not sure I can answer for you. I can only answer for myself. So I guess the question is, if this had not been sent to me by Keith of USA, would I have purchased it? Well, I'll tell you that it was on my wish list. I have a wish list of things I find and would eventually like to get a hold of, but it had kept falling to the bottom of the wish list because there were other things that I felt were a higher priority to get. Not that I didn't like this, not that I didn't want this, because I think everybody would like to own a titanium set. It's more a matter of there were other things that I wanted before I was going to spend the money on this or before I was going to ask my family to gift me 
with this. So I don't know. Would I have purchased it on the right day with a little extra cash in, in my bank account? Maybe I would have, but I wasn't at that point yet before Keith gave it to me. Do I enjoy having it? Ha has having owned it changed my mind? Yeah, actually to a degree it has. Um, I really, really like this kit. Once I got out the Rothko kit that I showed you earlier and I compared the two of them, I, there, there really was no comparison between the two. The, the Keith Titanium and again the heavy cover being of the same maker uh, are just head and shoulders above everything else that I've laid eyes on or had a chance to test. Is that enough to make it worthwhile purchasing? For some people, the ultra lightweight, the ultra strength, and the safety of the, having that non-reactive metal is enough to make it worthwhile. Again, the choice is going to be up to you. All right. Okay, so as we close this video, just a couple of thoughts. I made it relatively short in terms of demonstrations. You can see that I've used it in the fire a number of times. I used it over an alcohol stove today. I feel perfectly comfortable cooking with it. Now, having said that, there are limitations to titanium when it comes to cooking. They will develop hot spots. They will cause food to burn. So you do have to be very cautious. Although that can happen with aluminum and stainless steel too. So it's not that those are that much better that way. Uh, it's, if you really don't want anything to stick, carry around some seasoned cast iron. We're not, we're not doing that on the trail, are we? Okay, so I guess th what I want to do at this time is open the conversation up to you. Do you feel I missed anything that I should have spoken to regarding the Keith Titanium set? Is there anything else you would like me to tell you about it? Um, I will be coming back with the other Keith Titanium set, as I mentioned, the 40 ounce water bottle and the 650 milliliter mug and lid. Uh, yeah, okay, that's all I want to share with you in this video. If you have any comments or any questions, please put them in the video or in the comment section below. I will be putting the specs for this set in the video description as well as the link to where you can purchase it from Keith USA. And until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.